Hey, hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director, David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, an organization that's revved up and ready to make a big impact on local kids. Plus, a local nonprofit is, is expanding. We'll discuss its mission to keep people off local streets. Uh, for more on these topics and uh, everything else going on in Ward 4 these days, we're joined by Ward 4 Councilwoman Francis Allen Polensky. Welcome back to the program. Happy hey, holidays. Hey, we're in it. it it's we officially are. here. Before you know it, it, it happens, it creeps, off, creeps up on us, and it, uh, it is here. So It, it is. And uh, this is your last show of 2023, believe it or oh, not. Oh, I didn't look and at the so, schedule. So uh, we'll have to tear everybody at the end. And we had Nancy last week, it, sending our love to Nancy it, out there. Exactly. Do well, Nancy. And uh, so we got a packed show. We got a couple of great guests on here today. Nonprofit you, day. Before we get to that, though, uh, you know Ward 4 very well. It's your stomping ground out there. It is, it is. Represent that area. If you don't know exactly where Ward 4 is located, well, here's the map we're going to show you. <laughs> it's basically but the west know. side of, of our Las Vegas Valley. If you live in that area, work in that area with the big four on it, then, of course, you're in Ward 4, appropriately enough. And if you are a resident out there, then you are represented on the city council by Francis Allen Polensky. Mm -hmm. And um, been in office about a year all of a sudden. Right out of wow, year. Hard to believe. Went by fast. It does. It always does. So anyway. Um, Lot to talk about. I love how we highlight certain issues uh, on your show. That's that's one of the things that you've done since you've come into office. So we're going to jump right in here. Uh, the Las Vegas City Council recently honored the organization we're highlighting today. It's proclaim it proclaimed uh, September twentieth, twenty twenty three, as Speedway Children's Charities Day. We're pleased to welcome Paulette Anderson to the show. She's the director of the Las Vegas chapter of the Speedway Children's Charities. And Paulette, thank you so much for being here. I feel like I know you already because know. Uh, our paths have crossed uh, over the years. Yeah. And we honored you guys at council as Councilwoman yes. uh, had, had done uh, proclaiming that day mm -hmm. uh, for your organization. Yes. So, And I know Councilwoman, this isn't one of your favorites. Oh, kids. You know, <laughs> kids, seniors, everybody else in between, I'm not so sure about. <laughs> <laughs> Paula, tell everybody yes. out there, maybe if they're not familiar with the organization, sure. please tell them what, what, what is, uh, what Who is your are we? Yeah. Why are, yeah, why what do you do? in this studio? <laughs> so Speedway Children's Charities is a nonprofit organization. We are the philanthropic arm of what's called Speedway Motorsports. Mm -hmm. So we're the charitable wing of Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Mm -hmm. So that's where all of our planning, uh, implementation of events takes place at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. I am a staff of one, so I rely <laughs> on amazing volunteers, board of trustees, uh, the community, the Speedway, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, always helping us. Basically, we raise money all year through various fundraising activities. And then at the end of the year in December, which is in a couple weeks, we will be awarding all the money that's been raised. We will be awarding what's called grants to local children's charities to help kids in need. So last December, we gave for the first time a half a million dollars away wow. to 63 Talking local yet. charities. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And I will say this, uh, in two weeks, we will be giving a little bit more than half a million dollars away. That's true. Late breaking news, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for real. <laughs> So we will be giving that to local children's charities as well. So when I say that and you're thinking, well, who are we, what are you talking about, Paulette? Anything from giving grants to organizations, simple things like eyeglasses for kids mm -hmm. in need, winter coats, um, in this day and age, bedding, food. Uh, we do after school programs to help kids, to help disadvantaged children, high risk children, to live more productive lives, to be safer, to feel like they matter. Sure. With the homeless children we've given uh, to the organizations, we've given them grants to pay for bus passes so that kids can continue going to school and go to work. Not just the, the food in the shelter is lovely and so helpful, but they also need to start building careers and so forth. And we're also, Francis will remember, we're also big fans of giving organizations funds to send kids with disabilities, blood disease, mm -hmm. to specialized summer camps. Mm -hmm. Because some of these camps require a medical team. And so this is really important that their healthy brother and sister get to go to camp. Why don't they get to go to camp? Sure. So we do that. We give so much money away to help local kids in the community, foster children, to help with programs, with sexual trafficking. It's just what we do. The mission is to help kids in need. That's what we do all year round. We've started uh, already planning for next year. We just had our pajama 5K, our 10th <laughs> annual 
a couple days so ago. Fun. Yes, we had 1,700 people come out and run through the magnificent glittering lights at Las Vegas Motor right. Speedway. All in Christmas jammies. Yeah, all right. Pajamas, dogs in pajamas like you can't believe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but also glittering lights at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. It's open now through the first week in January, so I encourage your viewers to come out, bring your family. It's one price per car so you or vehicle. You can load up that vehicle as long as you have seatbelts. Take them through the glittering it's lights. Out, out of the speedway. Mm -hmm. yep. It's at Las Vegas. Yes, glittering lights at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Okay. So people get to enjoy this through the beginning of uh, January. And just so you know, uh, this program, Glittering Lights, they are an award-winning holiday light show from around the country and they also donate a portion of every entry every vehicle that entry enters goes back to us so last year they gave us over hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars just from the six-week program so i say make a tradition if it is your tradition load up go through enjoy <laughs> they have over five million lights and it's just so important for me to share that because that is going to happen through the end of the year and the beginning of January. So that will start our 2024 grant distribution with a huge, huge um, pot of gold at the end of the Glittering nice. Lights Rainbow. And I will <laughs> say, my family does it every year. We've done it for years and years and years. Yes. And you don't have to have a seatbelt once you get there. Mm -hmm. So we go on the back of the pickup truck and the kids have oh, hot yes. cocoa oh, yes. and popcorn mm -hmm. and ride hot and cocoa. Watch, yep. all the things. So. The, you need the seatbelt to get there. Yes. Once yeah. you get there on the, on the private you're road. you're not going too fast. No, in and there, you're going obviously. about five miles yeah, an exactly. hour. I usually drive. My husband's out in the back with the beanie with the kids in the bed of the that truck. Is. Lots of memories. So much Good fun. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, Councilman, I know you're really impressed with this organization. Yeah. You honored Wonderful them at work. council. Um, Tell us your first encounter with uh, with this charity. Well, I think the world of Paulette. She does an amazing yeah. job for so long now. Uh, like I mentioned, kids are kids and children's charities are the most important thing to me. And if we put the list of the charities that get these grants, you would recognize probably every single one of them, yes. from big ones to small ones. Right. They do a, such a wonderful job of curating, making sure that everybody gets something uh, from the big ones like Safe Nest to small ones. The small organization that built beds for kids in Las Vegas yes, we that have don't those. have beds. Mm -hmm. Exactly, like, little physically Lucy's. wooden beds. You don't think about it, you know, you, you your kids get in bed, they get ready for bed in their mm -hmm. cute little pajamas. Not everybody they, has a bed. They don't ha all have beds, they don't all have pajamas. Just this weekend at uh, uh, the Pajama 5K, hundreds of pajamas were donated. So I have wonderful volunteers who will count them this week and then I will break them up and take them over to the children's hospitals. Paula, these, mm -hmm. the kids that you, that you mm -hmm. focus on, all ages? Yes. Uh, uh, so. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, even the infants, we give pack and plays for Baby's Bounty and organizations mm -hmm. for young mothers that are teenagers. So they have kits that we pay for, these Speedway tote kits, mm -hmm. that they can go home and feel somewhat educated. So there's so much that we do um, for children of all ages. Assistance League, we funded grants so that they could provide all these little ones new, not just new PJs, but maybe five pair of undies and socks and shoes and, and it's all new. It's And they've never had anything new in their entire life. So at our grant ceremony in a few weeks, we not, we don't, I don't tell anyone how much they raise. Our, we like, they, we want them to come and actually pick up the check. We give all the kids a gift. We have a Santa that shows up and it's he really gives all the, yeah, we pull out all amazing. the socks. He gives away <laughs> the toys to the children. We have a beautiful Levy restaurants, provides like a nice, fun, child-friendly meal. And we just have a great time awesome. and we, that's our last. Does well, still drop from a helicopter? Well, I don't think, he's coming actually <laughs> in in a fire engine this year. That's oh, all been oh, wow. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Right? So we raise money all year. We have events. Um, should I talk about them? Well, sure. <laughs> you know what? You, you've got three minutes, so oh, sure, okay, go for okay. it. <laughs> okay. Well, then have your people put on their calendar. And in fact, this could be something they can think of to give as a holiday gift. So in on February 4th, it's a Sunday, we have what's called Laps for Charity. Mm -hmm. And that's where people take their personal vehicles and drive them around oh, our yeah, super yeah, speedway. Yeah, yeah. So you're actually, you get five to seven laps, depending on your donation. And you get to ride on the banking that all the NASCAR drivers yeah. Yeah, like, so they Yeah, so it's 75 miles an hour. So people come that'll say, well, I do that on the highway. No, you don't. Because <laughs> when you go up on that banking, you're going way up and it gets, it's very circle. exhilarating. Yeah. So that's a huge event. We usually have about seven, 800 people. But again, just bring your vehicle. It can be, as long as it's street legal. I mean, we've had hearses out there. We've had ice cream trucks. <laughs> I am, I kid you not. We have had the craziest, but they kept up and it's a great event. Laps for charity in February 4th, 
Lights Sunday. And then in the summer, we do a Laps for Charity Under the Lights. So you get to drive the same oh, thing, but Under nice. the Lights. Yeah, nice. And then we have NASCAR and PJ5K. They'll, uh, if there's an opportunity to visit our website come January, we'll have all of our new events for 2024. But right now you can support us with glittering lights at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Take your family, have a good time mm -hmm. out there. I know it I'm taking my family. Yeah, it's it helping helps local kids, kids yeah. in need and I will be out there with my family. We've been driving through since my son was in a, um, like a booster seat mm -hmm. and now he's 19. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> he'll t he'll, but he'll go with us. <laughs> sure, it's I said tradition, that. that's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> tradition. <laughs> All right. Well, Paulette, uh, great to have you on the program. Thank Best you. of luck to you. Thank Obviously, you so the timing, uh, Councilwoman timing for all this is perfect as we uh, are in the holiday season now. So um, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. You stick around because, yeah. uh, folks, we need to take a short break. But when we come back, a local nonprofit with plans to expand will talk about its mission to keep people off our local streets. That's next. So please stay with us. This is what too much sounds like. This is what stress feels like. And this is what help feels like. If you've lost a job, worry about your next meal, or have trouble making it through the day, we can help. Text STRESS to 211211 to find a solution. Welcome back everyone. The city of Las Vegas recently approved a major expansion for the Las Vegas Rescue Mission. It would double the size of the campus and provide more shelter for those who are homeless in our community. So it's very appropriate that our special guest today, Councilwoman, is none other than Heather Engel from the Las Vegas Rescue Mission. Heather, welcome to the program. It's Thank great to have you here. Me. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, and good theme uh, as we head into the holidays. So. Rescue mission. Uh, they feed Las Vegas. Yeah, they surely do. Huge, huge need uh, and the rescue mission. Heather, how long has the rescue mission been operating? So, 1970. Wow, 1970. Yeah, yeah. it started very small. And um, how many clients do you serve uh, on a yearly, monthly basis? What, what are the numbers that are coming through your doors? I know some of them are repeat folks that come back, but how many yeah. folks are, are we talking about? So we do a myriad of different things. We don't focus on one population. Mm -hmm. So as far as food service goes, as far as our community meal, we serve about 1,000 meals a day, so probably 30,000 a month. Um, and our community meal can go anywhere from 400 to you know 700. Wow. Yeah. And you do have that, of course, uh, that's a, a tradition at Thanksgiving, but it's actually done the day before Thanksgiving, correct? Yes. Yes, it was done yesterday, and it's huge. It's a it's a big deal. The staff, uh, we as staff and our volunteers actually serve uh, the the guests that come in on that day. On our normal meal day, they come through they come through the line, and it's you know I dignified so. and yeah, it's all wonderful. But in this, um, we put out tablecloths, cutlery, the the whole thing, wow. and then we serve them. And it is it is something that should not be missed. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you rely on volunteers? Do, do volunteers come and help? Uh, it seems like with, that, with an army that large coming through yeah. uh, that you'd really need uh, some help. We need from. about 30 volunteers a night wow. on, a, on a normal night to, serve, to do everything that we do at the mission and, and about 18 volunteers to do the community meal. So on Thanksgiving, we have quite a, you know, quite a few more. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Councilwoman, I know uh, such a need in our community. Mm -hmm. we've, we've, we're briefed all the time here at the city about our uh, situation related to homeless, uh, also people who are, who are in need in general. It's, it's, it's a huge problem. It is. It is. The unhoused population, uh, and I love Heather's story personally. She's, she's amazing, and she does a great job uh, dedicating her life to this. Oh, uh, and let's talk about those buildings. Those buildings are old on your campus. Those buildings are old. A lot of antiquated stuff going on. So the mission has just kind of been an evolution. It started as Pastor Compton giving away sandwiches. Right. So as the need has changed, you know, they've built buildings where they've needed them and expanded where they expanded. And so it's kind of become, um, some of the buildings are, are, are really, really, really old. Like, you know, IT issues, things like that. Mm -hmm. But space is a big deal too. And we're not accessible. We don't have ADA accessibility mm -hmm. um, only in one of our buildings. Wow, because it's so old. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, another factor too is, is I'm in long-term recovery and we only have 24 bids for women's recovery, wow. but we have 98 for men. 
And so that's a huge disparity on and having to turn. You're working on that. Way. We're working on that. So phase one of our uh, project is a, it's a $45 million uh, campaign. It's, it's quite large, but phase one will be the new shelter of hope. Then that'll give us 118 new beds for women's programming. So for recovery services, for um, our intact families, for emergency shelter overnight, and for extended stay for women. Wow. So the intact families, right? No other facility yes. in Southern Nevada. Correct. So it. yeah, it's a really special important. program. Yeah. yeah, it's a contract with, with the county and they, they honored us by asking us to do it and so we are. So we'll be building for that program as well. And Heather, talk about that real quickly. Um, normally families would be broken up, right? Men would Correct. go here, women go here, mm -hmm. maybe children with women, uh, yeah. but, but the families aren't gonna stay together generally. Yeah. And it's how they identify mm -hmm. too. It doesn't matter, you know, how they choose to identify as a family is how we honor them as a family. So we keep that whole family unit together, you that's know? Great. And so we're, we kind of rehabbed a space that's it's working, but it's certainly not optimal by any stretch of the imagination. So as we build and expand, they will have their own standalone. That's terrific. Yeah, it's a pretty cool program. We have an 82% success rate in placing in permanency. That's terrific. Yeah, it's that's cool. the key. Impressive ending, numbers. Yeah, exactly, to ending yeah. the, the, the cycle of of homelessness. Yeah. What's your time frame, Heather? What? Uh, how, how quickly are we going to see some of this uh, taking place? I'm hoping to start phase one. Put you know, shovel in the ground next fall. Wow. That's what we're oh, hoping. Oh, it's pretty do. aggressive. We just gave you entitlements. Yes. Two We've weeks been ago? raising money for a, for a minute prior to, to all that yeah. you know kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah. It's just been a little bit that uh, that we did that with city council and and they gave us a unanimous vote and it's just amazing <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a huge boost for sure. So now we're just, you know, vigorously doing what we need to do to bring in the capital to, to do Make it. Make it happen. Yeah. Heather, I think uh, those of us who've been here a long time know where the rescue mission is located. Mm -hmm. Those who maybe are new to the valley, tell them where, where, where you're located. It's 480 West Bonanza, so it's on Bonanza and D Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just, yeah. uh, just a little bit uh, north of the downtown there. You it's know, so, just yeah. north of the downtown. Um, our campaign is called Blessings Beyond the Bright Lights mm -hmm. because it literally is Just beyond, beyond the that. bright lights. Yeah. yeah. Heather, you've got an amazing story of your own. Um, do you mind sharing a little of that? Uh, sure. How you went from one to now you're kind of this angel of hope for people. <laughs> yes. Who, uh, oh, I like that. I like that. Uh, who are um, struggling to, to get out of a similar cycle. Wow, what a, what a beautiful uh, mm -hmm. phrase that was. So I'm 16 and a half years sober. My sobriety is 1107. And um, I'm, from Northern, I'm from Northern Nevada, from Carson City. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, it's, yeah, it's amazing. But through through you know progression of um, opiates and alcohol, um, I was really sick for a really long time. And in that same you know instance, uh, I lost everything that that you could lose: your family, your everything. But I lost I lost myself, and I did have a, an attempt. And um, through that process, I was uh, I found sobriety. But I was sick for a really long time. And then what helped you or what, where, where was the decision that I'm going to try to help others um, get out of this similar cycle? You know, there wasn't one. Mm -hmm. I had a, you know, a background with politics and all kinds of things like that. I morally couldn't align and that's nothing against politics or anything else. I just didn't fit anymore because when something like that happens to you, you are 100% rearranged into another person, you know, literally from the inside out. And so it just kind of happened for me, you know, it, it kind of happened for me. It showed up in my life, you know, it had great direction. And, uh, and just one thing after another kind of showed up in my space. And it's nothing I ever sought after or really strove for. It just, it just showed up in my life. Sounded like um, there was a plan in place uh, mm. <laughs> for, for Heather that she yes. didn't realize was, yes. was uh, taking place perhaps. Absolutely. So. Heather, we're running low on time. This, uh, that's an amazing story. And I just think, uh, Councilwoman, how many lives you've touched oh. because yeah. of the change you made in your own life. Um, tell us what comes next uh, for, for the mission and uh, what, what everyone hopes to accomplish. Well, I think what, what comes next for us is, is, you know, to get this going, you know, to actually put a shovel in the ground and get dirt moving. We have everybody in place, architects, all those kind of things that we need to, to have. So um, if people are interested in learning more about it, they can go to blessingsbeyondthebrightlights.org. And for volunteer stuff at the mission, it's VegasRescue.org. And we need volunteers. Yeah, all a the lot, time. a lot, it sounds like. All yeah, the time. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Find me on there, give me a call. 
you know, I'd like, I always like to kind of end with this. If you're struggling yourself, you know, if you're struggling yourself with, with anything, but alcohol and drugs, and it's not something that you feel like you can talk about or whatever, you know, call the mission to find me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, She's yeah. been there and yeah. uh, you can, uh, give some good advice. So yeah, well, we can hold hands for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we say, you know, um, when the person's in the hole, a lot of people walk by and throw in advice or information, but an alcoholic <laughs> will jump in the hole with you because we know how to get out. Uh, so you really are an angel, I think, so. Agreed, agreed. <laughs> Councilwoman, uh, this is such an important part of what we're trying to accomplish at the city, uh, the rescue mission, all the other nonprofits, government, uh, city, all the- Government can't do it alone. Exactly right. I wish exactly. we could, but we can't. Exactly. And having these nonprofit partners make all the difference for the city of Las Vegas. Yeah, they surely do. And the whole effort, uh, I think we want the nonprofits, we want government obviously, mm -hmm. and we need the private sector to get involved too. Cities that have had great success in um, addressing most, their homeless problems uh, have really had great success and help from corporations, the private sector that stepped in as well. So you get all yeah. those uh, groups working together and you really start to move the needle. Then. Mm -hmm. I know that's something that you and the other council members are, are really working, yeah, working on mm -hmm. as well. Heather, we're about out of time. I'll give you the final word. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? It's just, it's just a real honor to be here, you know, and, and thank you to you for, for asking. I was so excited to get that email, you know. <laughs> um, I think that, I, I think too, as far as the city council goes, people need to know that they're accessible to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're accessible to you. And, uh, and you, should, you should make an appointment with your, with, you know, the council person who's in your ward and, and take advantage of that. Because thank you, Heather. A, group deal, man. It is. And that's why we do shows like this. And that's why at the end, we always tell you how to get in touch with the councilwoman and the rest of the council, yeah. because that's why we do this is to stay connected. And uh, Absolutely. Councilwoman Polensky and all of her colleagues do a lot to reach out into the community every day. And here we are again. So that's right. <laughs> thank that's you for about. noticing Heather and for mentioning that as well. So we appreciate it. So, well, best of luck to you. you. Uh, you're doing big, important work, uh, not just this time of year, but 365 days of yep. the year. And we wish you a great success because your success is the success Our of success. the individuals. Exactly. So, so thank you so much for being on the program. And uh, Councilwoman, we need to take another short break, but when we come back and before we rack up, wrap up, we're gonna look at what's coming up in the new year in Ward 4. That's right after this. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Welcome back, everyone. We are visiting with Ward 4's Councilwoman Frances Allen Polensky. And Councilwoman, you have some big events coming up here that we want to make sure people know about. Finish out the year strong. Finish out the year strong, exactly. Uh, December 9th, from 10 to noon, we have a household hazardous waste drop off at Mountain Shadows Clubhouse. In the heart of Sun City. The heart of Sun City. And this is so important. We don't want folks throwing this kind of stuff. What are we talking about here? We're talking about paint, batteries, oil, things like that that do not belong in the trash. Let's all be eco-friendly. This is your opportunity to come and dispose of it properly. Yeah, because that stuff will end up in the landfill, mm -hmm. which then it'll get into the soil and, and God knows Table. where from there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. groundwater. So um, again, really hope that everybody takes part in that. Is there a limit, Councilwoman, to what you can bring? Uh, just yeah, I think uh, we asked for no more than five, something like that, but we're not super. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just yeah. get those buckets just, of paint that are like partially filled, yeah. you know, that's what we're looking for. Correct. Bring it out there and mm -hmm. they'll dispose of it's that. It's usually rock hard anyway. We live in the desert. Exactly, and arid, so. you're not gonna use it anymore, so uh, yeah. Don't throw it into the trash, bring it out to the event. It's, it's really e efficient too. Mm -hmm. You drive up, drop it off, uh, you're in and out of there in, in no time. So 
Again, that's going to be December 9th, uh, 10 to noon, uh, the Household Hazardous Waste uh, drop-off, uh, Mountain Shadows Clubhouse. Now, also at Mountain Shadows Clubhouse, mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be in January. It's the Sun City Document Shredding Event. So all you folks out there that are trying to protect yourself from identity theft, it's going to take place Saturday, January 6th from 10 to noon. Again, Mountain Shadows Clubhouse put in the parking lot there. Now, this does have a lim limit, Councilwoman, of what, what, five boxes per, oh, per car? Of stuff. Because we really do get a lot of stuff. Uh, people bring boxes and boxes of this now. So This is high demand. Uh, we actually had one last weekend. We have one in January. Because it's so popular, we added additional, uh, an additional event to the calendar. Excellent. So those folks in Sun City always love this one. Uh, we provide donuts and coffee, too, in the morning for the early the early birds. Uh, and uh, overwhelming response. Last time we had the, the line wrapped all the way down oh. uh, outside of the community center. And we were blocking the road. So uh, a lot of folks, a lot of folks. Uh, you have a request of folks of what they bring because uh, we had a little incident before. My first shredding, I actually uh, ran a fire. My husband's a firefighter, and I say this was my first incident command where I I directed the uh, the fire, and uh, uh, it was under uh, some questionable circumstances. Someone had actually put a battery yeah. in the documents that were shredded. There's a big metal auger in our shredding machine. Yeah. And it sparked. It, it, batteries are flammable. Yeah, how about and that? And then it was just paper in there, so it was easily Oof. correct. So uh, no batteries. <laughs> yeah, no cell phones. No We've had cell phones. phones. Uh, no cell phones. No paper know, clips. The clips, no. yeah, the yeah. big clips. Um, just paper. Yeah. Only yeah. paper, no yeah. trash, nothing else. Only paper. And we'll also uh, be doing medical disposal, too. So if oh, you, nice. you take Drugs. all those amber yeah, bottles, yeah, 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 yeah. and we don't want your bottles, we don't want your prescription number, we don't your, want your name or address, put that in a Ziploc bag. Only the medication in a Ziploc bag you're going to hand to us, and we're going to properly dispose yeah. of that, too. Yeah. They incinerate that. It, uh, Correct. It goes away so that it's not going to end up in the landfill, or worse yet, in the water supply. Correct. Please don't. Sometimes there's this propensity people want to all just flush it down the toilet. Oh, Please, no. That's the worst thing you can do because that's going to go back to Lake Mead, which is where our water comes from. So we don't want you throwing it into the into the into the toilet. Please. All the water. The sink. All the water in your house gets recycled. Exactly. It's a exactly. Water ecosystem that we are all very proud of. And uh, we want to protect it because mm -hmm. it's our future. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, Councilwoman, uh, it's hard to believe, but this is our last show with you in 2023. It is. It is. Is the year went by so fast? I feel like we did a lot of great things, but there's more, more good to accomplish. Uh, happy holidays, happy new year from Ward Four. We will see you in January. Yeah, see you in the new year, everybody. And uh, in the meantime, uh, Councilwoman, we want to tell everybody out there, hey, you know, we always want to hear from you. So if there's mm. something you'd like to share mm -hmm. with Councilwoman Polensky, you can find her on Facebook and X, which is formerly known as Twitter. Uh, you can also contact the Councilwoman at 702-229-6405 or send her an email. Her address here at the city is fpolensky at lasvegasnevada.gov. And she or one of her great staff will get right back to you. And that's the whole point. We're talking about that, Councilwoman. We're trying to let people know if they have questions or concerns, they can reach right out to us. So we are all here. super accessible. <laughs> we love to hear from people. That's why we sign up for this job, really. Right. All right. Very good. Well, Happy New Year. Happy Holidays yes. to you. See you in 2024. Yikes. Uh, and they the keep going. They keep yeah, I know. The click, calendar. Click, click. I know. <laughs> the days are long and the years are short. Yes. That's the old saying, right? Yes. So, so true. But uh, everyone out there, uh, please don't miss our next show beginning on November 30th with Ward 2 City Councilwoman Victoria Seaman. You can now catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Also, watch for our QR code after this show to subscribe to our newsletter. And don't forget, you can watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time around, and happy holidays.